It's Friday, 20 September. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel and congratulations, we just made 100,000 subscribers today thanks to your support. But we've got business to do. We gotta finish up the update that we started the other day on the Boeing 777X and what is the holdup with the new GE9X engines. The 777X and the GE9X engine represents the largest twin-engine aircraft and largest gas turbine engine in the aviation industry today. The key to the Boeing 777, which I've had the privilege of flying the 777-300ER the last couple of years here, the, the key to this latest generation of aircraft is efficiency. And what the Boeing 777 can do over the Boeing 787 is it can haul the mail. It can haul a whole lot of passengers and a whole lot of cargo at the same time. More cargo than any of these other large twin engine aircraft. So the goal of all of these next generations of aircraft is not to go faster, but to go more fuel efficiently. In order to go more fuel efficiently, that's taking substantial leaps in materials technology to make this happen. Materials need to be able to handle higher pressures and higher temperatures in order to achieve this efficiency. So what's the delay with the 9X engines right now? It's basically a problem with the stator vanes of the engine. The fixed titanium stator blades, the stationary blades in the compressor section of the engine, they found that those stator blades have been wearing down prematurely. They have not been meeting what we call in the small airplane industry, TBO, time between overhaul standards. They're not holding up to the task. So, new stator blades have already been designed by General Electric. However, they have to go through the entire exhaustive testing process with these new stator blades all over again and that's what the holdup is. The holdup is in the testing and certification of these new stator blades. Now let's go into detail, more detail about the 9X engine and the stator blades specifically. The efficiency of these new designs starts with the redesign of the Boeing 777X wing. Using the composite, advanced composite materials and aerodynamic designs, this is going to allow the 777X to operate at a higher altitude than previous versions of the 777. The higher the altitude that you can operate, the cooler temperatures you, you achieve up there, and thus the more efficiently you can get your jet engines to operate. The less fuel you will burn per hour if you can get up to a high altitude and stay up there. Now the engine that I've had the privilege of operating, the GE9115B on the 777-300ER, that engine is rated at about 115,000 pounds of thrust. It held the world's record as the most powerful turbine engines at 127,000 pounds of thrust. Well, that record has been broken by the 9X engine, the predecessor, or the new engine to follow on after this, at 134,000 pounds of thrust. The most powerful turbine engine in the world today. What this means today is you can take an aircraft like the Boeing 777-300ER at max gross weight, which is 777,000 pounds, lose an engine at critical phase of flight right there at V1 rotate when you're getting ready to break ground, completely lose one engine and still fly around the pattern and land safely on the one remaining engine at 115,000 pounds of thrust. 
Even though the new GE9X has the world record at 134,000 pounds of thrust, the plan is to derate this engine and operate it at a lower power setting than the 90, the previous version of this engine. The 9X is planned to be rated at about 105,000 pounds of thrust as opposed to the 115,000 pounds of thrust of the 90. This is where increases in fuel efficiency will begin to be realized. The engine pressure ratio is a common measurement of engine efficiency. Engine pressure ratio is the difference between the compressor inlet press pressure versus the turbine outlet pressure. On the 90 series of, of aircraft engines on the Boeing 777, that engine pressure ratio was about 40 to 1. On the new 9X engine for the 777X, that pressure ratio is going to be cranked up to a record breaking 60 to 1. Key to achieving this kind of efficiency is the increase in technology of materials science, and part of that is included in the compressor section. The compressor section of the 90 series, the old series of 777 engine, is about is 19 to 1, and the compressor and the compression ratio in the new 9X engine is going to be 27 to 1. So they're extracting a faster amount of energy out of these engines using lighter material. So let's take a closer look at where these stator vanes are physically located inside the engine. The fixed stator blades are mounted to the outer casing of the engine and are located in between the rotating compressor blades. The whole idea of the stator blades is to help straighten out the airflow, making the flow through the compressor section more axial. As air flows smoothly through each stage of the compressor, pressure is increased. This stored energy will later be released in the combustor and turbine section of the engine. The issue with the stators was discovered late in testing where engineers found EGT or exhaust gas temperature temperatures were rising excessively. Once they tore the engine down, they found the stator vanes worn excessively, causing the rise in EGT. Now let's talk a bit about technological advances in material science in the turbine section of the engine. A lot of this efficiency is gained in the turbine section of the 9X engine where CMCs or ceramic matrix composite materials are being used more and more, especially in high temperature sections like the turbine section. As opposed to using traditional metal materials like titanium, the CMCs or ceramic matrix composites are about two thirds lighter than metal and can handle 20% higher temperatures. Since this material can handle temperatures up to 2500 degrees Fahrenheit, a full 500 degrees hotter than traditional metal alloys, that means less cooling air is required to keep these materials cool. So with less air needed just for cooling, you can run a more efficient engine. So right now, General Electric has 18 of these 9X engines, 10 of them Ten of these engines are for flight testing and eight of these engines are for production models. The stators on all of these engines need to be replaced with the new stators that they built now and the testing has to be completed on all these engines. Now they've mentioned in their literature that the 9X engine has already gone through 14.5 million cycles. A cycle is a temperature cycle basically starting the engine and stopping the engine. I don't know if they need to go through all 14.5 million cycles again, but they're saying that they should have the testing of these new stators done by the end of the year, and they should have engine delivery by the middle of next year. But typically it takes about a year to get a new engine certified through the FAA process, so if they get the testing done by the end of this year, I don't know how they're gonna get the engines delivered in a year's time hence. So I hope this gives you a better understanding of the GE9X engine delays on the Boeing 777X program. Stay tuned for future updates. See you here. Warm it up. Stay away, fire season.
As an interesting aside, one of the earliest developments of turbine wheel design occurred right here in my hometown, downtown Nevada City, California, the heart of the gold rush, with this, the Pelton wheel. The Pelton wheel with its unique split bucket design was developed by Lester Pelton in Camptonville, California, just not too many miles from here. And urban legend has it, and it's hard to tell if this is historical fact or urban legend, that the idea for this split bucket design came when Lester Pelton saw a uh, cow getting into his neighbor's yard and that neighbor squirted the cow right in the nose with the water hose and he noted how well that water, how effective it was getting rid of the cow, getting the cow out of the garden, but how it split the water stream in the cow's nose and he experimented with this and came up with a split bucket design Pelton wheel which provided a much more efficient water wheel than your standard bucket water wheel. Of course, these wheels were used here in the gold rush to power heavy equipment like this stamp mill. In fact, this wheel was forged right here in this foundry in the building behind me here in downtown Nevada City. Here's another smaller example of the Pelton wheel. Here's another example, and these relics can still be found out in the National Forest around here to this day. And water is impinged on the buckets using these nozzles. And of course, the wheel turns the axle, the axle turns the pulleys and the pulleys turn the belts and the belts and pulleys move the machinery. This is a um, stamp mill used for stamp crushing the ore to get the gold extracted from the ore from the miners foundry right here in Nevada City. And the water for all this was extracted out of the High Sierra. Folks went up there and created reservoirs and dug miles and miles of canal to feed the water down into the gold mines here in the Nevada City Grass Valley area at about the two or 3,000 foot elevation and much of that canal system still exists to this day as the Nevada Irrigation District. Here's a model stamp mill that uh, engineers used to make sales of their product back in the day. A demonstrator. And this is the result of what they were after, California gold. This is Pat Dyer, proprietor of Utopian Stone Jewelry Store right here in downtown Nevada City. Pat, what, what size uh, nugget would you this, say you got this there? This here nugget seven ounces. Seven ounces. Yeah. Now, is that one uh, California or is that Australia? This, this one's actually Australian, uh -huh. but most everything we have other than this one is local. So would this be a better example of California gold right down there? Yeah, well, and, and then California gold was this big too. Um, this Australian stuff is real nice and yellow. Uh, California gold can be, but sometimes isn't quite this yellow, but it's all beautiful. And we're in the middle of the gold country and there's lots of local gold here. And there's lots of local gold still left in the ground here oh, too. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah sure. Just a matter of cost yeah. to get it. Yeah, it's a business. That's right. <laughs> We can talk more about Gold Rush history here in Nevada City till the cows come home. Come by and see Utopian Stone Jewelry in downtown Nevada City. Tell them Blanco Lirio sent ya. See you here. <laughs>